Hi, I'm Abel of Slenterum de Beer, and in this video I want to talk about the latest addition to our Volca setup, which is the FMR RNC, or Really Nice Compressor. When we started recording our music, we used a simple mixer, but we quickly realized it was too limited. For example, we would record a one hour jam, and then listening back to it, we would notice that, for example, the bass was too loud in a certain part, or uh, there was just a huge mistake that we would have liked to correct, but we weren't able to. So then we decided to switch to the Behringer UFX 1204, which supports multi-track recording. We've attached an external USB hard drive, which means that when I press record, it will create separate WAV files for each of the channels uh, of this mixer. So now we have additional possibilities of correcting the volume in certain parts, uh, applying EQ to only certain instruments, and uh, applying compression and some sidechain as well. For a while this meant that we would mix every jam after it was recorded, but quickly we, we were seeing that the frequency of us uploading our jams was decreasing, so we decided we only wanted to apply this additional mixing for music that we want to release. The reason we've now added this compressor is because most of the examples that I, I just mentioned, correcting the volume or correcting the EQ, you can do on the mixer itself. We can do this while playing if we just keep enough attention, right? For a long time this was fine, we got better at playing together, so we would learn to keep an eye on the levels and make sure the EQ was correct. But in some examples of recorded jams we thought it sounded a little bit flat, uh, there wasn't a lot of interaction between the, the sound of the instruments, uh, which is something sidechain compression could achieve. So I'll just give a very quick introduction of what a compressor is. It's completely new to me, it might be to you, so I'll just show you what it means. Simply put, a compressor reduces the volume of certain peaks in audio. Another word for this is gain reduction. And I'll try to explain this using this drawing I made. So let's say this represents the volumes of a certain audio recording. You'll see that certain parts are higher, others are lower. So the first element that comes into play is the threshold. So let's say I would put a threshold on this line, then it would mean that the compressor kicks in, starts reducing the volume uh, of the audio recording when the volume goes over that threshold. Makes sense, right? The second element is the ratio and this determines the amount of compression that is applied. The easiest way to explain compression ratio is by using some numbers as an example. So let's say we have a compression ratio of two to one. That would mean that if there's a peak in the audio that goes over the threshold with eight decibel, then the compressor would reduce it with four decibel. If you're familiar with envelopes on a synthesizer, the next two elements, attack and release, work kind of in the same way. So attack describes how long it takes for the compression to go from its original volume to the reduced volume. And release describes how long it takes from the completely reduced volume to go to its original volume again. I'll show this later with some examples. The final element of this compressor is gain compensation. As I explained, a compressor reduces the volume, but you'll need to compensate that gain reduction by applying some additional gain. The RNC is quite a simple compressor. Other compressors have more options, uh, but I, I'm not gonna go into that now. So before we go into the sidechain feature of the compressor, I wanna do a quick demo to show you how it sounds without the sidechain enabled. And I'll quickly explain how I've set up the audio on the mixer. So there's the four Volcas that are controlled by the beat step and key step. Um, each of the Volcas is connected to an effects pedal, except for the Volca sample, which is going directly into the mixer. I am not using the Therme in this video, and I was too lazy to take it away. Now the next interesting part was getting the sound of the mixer into the compressor, and then back into the mixer again, because I wanted to hear the compressed sound and play with its settings. The way I've achieved this is by using the mixer's additional groups or outputs. So this mixer has this additional audio group which you can, for example, use to send certain channels to a monitor or uh, a separate mixer, for example. 
You can decide to send your audio to this additional group by enabling the Alt 3, 4 buttons. It says mute there as well, but it has a double function. So the mixer's output of this additional group goes into the compressor, and then I'm sending the output of the compressor back into the mixer again so that I can listen to it. And it's uh, now connected to channel three and four. So let's have a quick listen to what I've recorded. So that's what this sounds like without the compressor being active. And I will now activate the compressor and play with some of the settings so that you can hear what it does to the overall sound. Right, so that was an example of using the RNC compressor without sidechaining. I used some of the more extreme settings to emphasize its effect on the audio. There's one more feature apart from sidechaining that I haven't shown from the RNC, which is the super nice mode. When super nice mode is enabled, the RNC uses three compressors uh, to eliminate some of the artifacts that come with applying compression. First, let's listen to the audio without compression applied. And now I'll enable the compressor with some extreme settings to make sure you hear the artifacts. You might need to wear headphones to hear the difference, but in the higher frequencies, there is some distortion going on. Now let's keep the same settings of the compressor and enable nice mode to hear the difference. I hope you can hear that the artifacts are less audible now. The downside to super nice mode is that the attack and release become less immediate in the way that it'll take longer for the compression to be applied and released. Now I'm pretty happy with the sound I get from the compressor as is, but there's a few things that I've noticed that I wanted to improve on. The first thing is that as you increase the compression, some of the low frequencies might get lost. In this type of music, usually the kick is the loudest element of the entire audio recording. Um, and that's a problem with uh, compression on the entire mix, because every time the kick sounds, the compression kicks in and it reduces the volume of the kick. That's actually something I forgot to mention. Usually a compressor is applied to a single instrument and not the entire mix. So this means you'll need to find creative solutions for the problems you run into. 
So we'll talk more about fixing that uh, dropping of the low frequencies later. The other issue is that with its current settings, any peak in the audio recording can trigger the compression. This might be a drum hit like a clap or snare, or maybe a synth note that uh, just pierces through the audio. But the sound I was looking for is the kick being the element that pushes the rest of the audio away. So the kick should trigger the compression. And this is where sidechaining comes in. So sidechaining means that you'll have an external audio source for triggering the compression. Typically this is done by something called a ghost kick or a ghost note. So you might have an additional sequencer running which plays the same kick pattern. And then that's not routed to the mixer but routed into the compressor's sidechain input. Now this is uh, something the RNC can do as well. However, the RNC sidechain input can also be used as an effects insert. And this is quite similar to how a mixer's insert might work. In this case, the effect I'm gonna use is the Zoom MS50G guitar pedal. You can just plug this TRS cable into the back of the compressor into its sidechain input and then the left channel will contain the audio coming out of the compressor. So that's basically the audio you're sending into it from your mixer. And then the other audio is routed back to uh, into the sidechain input. So this means you can apply a filter or EQ to the signal that is being used to sidechain the overall sound. So I've just connected the MS50G to the RNC's sidechain input. And to be clear, what I'm trying to achieve here is to extract the kick from the overall audio. And the way I'm doing this is to use the parametric equalizer that's on the pedal. This effect basically has two EQ bands um, for which you can set different settings. And uh, I'm gonna use the first to emphasize the low frequencies and the second to de-emphasize the higher frequencies. For the first EQ band, I've set the frequency to 32 hertz. Uh, I've played around with my um, sounds to make sure I get the kick isolated that way. And um, the value for Q, I've set to eight out of 16. The lowest, lowest value is 0 0.5. And Q indicates the width of frequencies that should be affected by these settings which means that the higher the value for Q, the narrower the range of um, frequencies that are affected. So in this case, I really want to isolate the sound of the kick, which is why this works fine for me. Um, and then I've set the gain for this EQ band to its highest value to make sure it pop pops out. Um, for the second EQ band, I've set the frequency to 1.6 kilohertz, so that's a very high uh, frequency. And then the Q, I've set to its lowest value to make sure that it affects a broad range of frequencies around that main frequency. And of course, I've set the gain to its lowest value to, to make sure it extracts those um, uh, sounds, frequencies. And on the final page, I've set the level of this effect to its maximum value. Now to make this more specific and give an example, what I'm trying to achieve is to extract the kick from the total audio and have that trigger the compression, uh, but not the bass. And they're very close to each other frequency wise. So let's see what this means when I'm uh, sounding both of them. As you could see, the volume of the kick compared to the bass is so much higher that it's a proper way to um, trigger the sidechain input. Okay, so now let's hear what this sounds like.
right? So as you could hear, the kick was the only thing triggering the compression, even though the threshold was set at a quite a sensitive range. So now let's listen to what the super nice mode sounds like with the sidechain applied, and I'll have to reduce the release to maintain that punchy kick. So as you heard, the effect in super nice mode is a little bit smoother, it's less extreme, but it also means you have less control over attack and release. And I can demonstrate that more clearly to give you a sense of um, when you would actually need it, right? So I've prepared a variation of the demo music we were just listening to, and it um, has some more infrequent and more repeating kicks. Um, so let's see what that does to the sound. Um, first when it's in the non super nice mode um, to get the attack very quick and then try out super nice mode. And let's try super nice mode again. So in super nice mode, the compression sidechaining effect is less harsh, smoother somehow, uh, but also you have less control over getting that exact sidechaining sound you're looking for. One more way to show the effect of the attack and release functions is to half the tempo of the entire pattern that I was playing um, and really exaggerate the, the settings to get a certain sound and I'll show you what I mean. So as you heard, it's a very interesting way to play with the release of the compression. Um, I haven't really gotten the hang yet of how to use the attack when it's useful to set it at a higher value. Um, right now I have the feeling that if I keep it at its lowest value, it, re it retains the punch that I'm looking for. So I've been using quite extreme settings for the compressor. It's not the sound I'm looking for, but it shows how you can use it in your music. So before I wanna show you the settings that I prefer for this setup currently, I wanna talk about the issue I mentioned before, which is uh, of the lower frequencies dropping when the kick sounds. So just to rewind, the issue I'm talking about is that when the kick is triggering the compressor using the sidechain, uh, what happens is that the volume of the kick itself is also reduced, so you'll lose some of the low end. There are different options when you're trying to solve this problem. One option that I read about is to use a high pass filter on the sidechain input to filter out the low frequencies so that you won't reduce those low frequencies. But I'm kind of wondering whether that's what I want since it's basically the opposite of what I'm doing right now with the sidechain, right? I'm isolating the kick by 
increasing the low frequencies and reducing the high frequency. So I'm not really sure about that solution. Anyway, the simplest solution is just to increase the low frequencies on your mixer by using its equalizer. If you have a mixer that has a proper equalizer. So the sound from the compressor is going back into the mixer and on the mixer I've increased a little bit of the low end on uh, the equalizer there. And then for the channel for the bass, I've reduced the low frequencies a little. So in the final example, I'm just gonna bring it all together, uh, use less of the extreme settings on the compression and uh, use these equalizing settings to bring back the low end. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about. This whole compression thing is still quite new to me. I think it's a very interesting device, the RNC, especially because of its sidechain behavior. There's a lot of flexibility there. Um, other than that, I like the sounds that are coming out of this experiment. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Bye.